Hi everyone. So today we are going to be looking at microgreens and sprouts. So essentially microgreens and sprouts are plants that are harvested at an immature stage. And it's the age at which we harvest them that is going to determine whether they are a sprout or a microgreen. So our sprouts are younger, and I'm going to jump ahead here, but if we look at our sprouts, they are harvested in about three to five days. So they're three to five days old, we'll say, whereas our microgreens are harvested when they're a little bit older, between seven to 21 days, depending on the species. So like I said, both of these are just immature plants. Now, when we're looking at microgreens, they are going to typically consist of a stem, cotyledons, which are the seed leaves, and then possibly the first set of true leaves, right, which are the leaves that develop initially, right, once our plant has germinated. They're typically between two to three inches in height, and as I mentioned before, they're harvested between seven to 21 days, again, depending on the species. And we grow our microgreens, we can grow them either hydroponically or in soil. In the lab, I'm going to show you um, some how I grew microgreens last year um, for this same course. So there'll be the, the lab for you guys to watch. I was going to go through the process of how to grow these. Now our sprouts are um, just younger. So they consist mainly of just the germinated seed with the emerging root. Remember when we're talking about germination, the end stage of that initial part of germination is the radical emergence. So that's what you see here. And then sometimes you'll see a little bit of the sprout growing and the cotyledons as well. But if you look at these two pictures, these are both the same species. These are both broccoli. And you can see here that our broccoli sprouts are just younger, right? than our broccoli microgreens, which are a little bit older. So again, sprouts seed with the germinated seed with the emerging root, no true leaves. Uh, and with our sprouts, we typically grow them hydroponically, not in soil. So why, we're gonna start with microgreens and I'll, a lot of the stuff that I list here with microgreens does apply to sprouts as well. Um, maybe not so much with the restaurants, but with the health and potential profit, uh, possibly. So why grow microgreens, right? We're gonna start with them. Well, there are three main reasons. First, they are healthy, right? So our microgreens, as we're gonna see, are higher, have higher nutrient levels than their mature counterparts. Now, they, so if you are into health for your own personal consumption, they may be something good for you guys to grow. Because they're healthy, they are becoming popular in health food stores, right? Or some, or as part of the health food section in uh, grocery stores. Now they also add flavor, color, or texture to a dish, and um, you are seeing uh, more high-end restaurants using microgreens, right, to add these things to their dishes. And as a result, uh, microgreens can be quite profitable. So we're gonna go a little bit into the uh, economics of growing microgreens, right? And the profit uh, margins and the margins that you have. Um, but essentially for a pound of microgreens, you get an average selling price between 25 to $40. And to actually grow that pound of microgreens, it's a fraction of that cost, right? And we'll break that down in a little bit. So. A lot of reasons may why you may want to grow microgreens. Now, if we're looking at health, as I mentioned, I said that microgreens are healthy and that they contain more nutrients than their mature counterparts. So a couple of years ago, uh, researchers at the University of Maryland did a study to actually look at this and they measured the nutrient concentrations of 25 microgreens. And that's the study listed over here. And they were uh, concerned with a number of nutrients that they looked at. They looked at, and I have some of them listed. Essentially, they were uh, vitamins, right? So absorbic acid is a type of vitamin C. They looked at vitamin K1 or phyloquinone. Tocopherols are vitamin E. Carotenoids are vitamin A's, right? Beta-carotene is, is one of those. Essentially, all of these 
uh, nutrients uh, have different roles in the body. A lot of them are antioxidants. So antioxidants help rid your body of free radicals that could damage your cells. Uh, so important, they have a, a number of good roles, right, these nutrients. And they found that microgreens had four to 40 times higher concentration of these nutrients than their mature leaves, right, or the leaves of a mature plant. And within the microgreens that they studied, they saw that the highest nutrient levels were found in garnet, amaranth, cilantro, pea, red cabbage, red sorrel, and red sorrel, right? So they are packed with nutrients. Along the same lines, uh, we know that our sprouts are also nutrient dense. Now I've only looked at broccoli sprouts. I think they're the most common ones that are grown and they have been some studies done on the um, nutrients within broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts are, come from broccoli, right? And broccoli is a member of the Brassicaceae, or they are cruciferous. They're a cruciferous vegetable. You've probably heard that term. So the consumption of cruciferous vegetables has been linked to decreases in mortality, lower rates of cancer, including prostate, bladder, breast, and lung cancer, reduced inflammation, and increased longevity. Now, um, this has the benefits or the health benefits of cruciferous vegetables has been promoted for thousands of years. Cato the Elder, who was a um, Roman, I believe, Greek or Roman physician, and he actually wrote a book on agriculture. He uh, loved cabbage. He said cabbage uh, cured all ailments. Now, he took it to the extreme where he actually recommended that you eat cabbage and then you, when you pee, you save your pee and then you can bathe in that to get added health benefits. Uh, I don't think you need to do that or there's been any research on that, but he was right about the um, health benefits of consuming cabbage or cruciferous vegetables in general. So specifically, when we look at broccoli sprouts, uh, there have been studies done. And importantly, broccoli sprouts contain 100 times more glucoraphanin than mature broccoli. Now, glucoraphanin is a precursor to sulforaphane. And sulforaphane is important because it is a natural inducer of this NRF2 pathway. Now, this is a pathway in your body that controls a whole bunch of genes that can help do that will deactivate and remove carcinogens from your body, reduce inflammation and increase the production production of antioxidants, right? So broccoli sprouts have a bunch of glucoraphanin, that glucoraphanin in your body gets turned into sulforaphane, and then that sulforaphane activates these this NRF2 pathway which turns on all these genes that helps remove carcinogens from your body. Right? That's how it kind of works. And one of the biggest carcinogens that it removes from your body is benzene. Uh, benzene is a is found in it's a as I said a carcinogen. It's found in a number of things, um, oil, gases. Uh, if you are a smoker, you're going to have more benzene in your body. So this broccoli sprouts might be particularly important for you to consume in that case. Now they also found that. Uh, consuming broccoli sprouts, we've seen increases or a link to mental health improvement and improvement in autism. Uh, so they did a test where um, with uh, the group that consumed broccoli sprouts, they saw um, more attentive behavior uh, in autistic, uh, there were people that suffered from autism uh, than not if they didn't consume broccoli sprouts. All right, so some interesting effects that they've seen. Um, they haven't quantified exactly how much you need to consume, but the kind of um, suggestion is about 100 grams a day. In the end of this lecture, I'll show you how to uh, grow sprouts. I actually include in the lab too. Uh, one large container, one mason jar of broccoli sprouts is about 100 grams. So you'd have to eat one uh, jar a day. Uh, which is a lot, <laughs> but uh, I included them in smoothies and they actually weren't so bad. They have a pretty strong taste, but if you mix it with some stuff, they ain't that bad. 
So some health benefits of our microgreens or our broccoli sprouts, um, why they might want to grow them, why people or how people are using them is, as you see in the pictures here, they are being used as garnishes for a number of dishes, particularly, as I said, in certain high-end restaurants. So they add a little texture, they add a little additional flavor, right? Some of them, they are often um, pretty packed with flavor. They have a strong flavor. So because they are becoming more popular, there is a profit to be made in growing them, particularly if you could hook up with uh, some restaurants that are going to buy them from you. So if we're talking about growing for profit with our microgreens, uh, there are some basics that you should um, consider or understand. Uh, typically, now this is a typical breakdown of your costs associated with growing microgreens and the earnings that you can expect, right? So on a whole, your microgreen selling price is about $25 to $40 per pound, depending on what you're growing. Now your yield per tray, we're gonna be growing these in flats, right? Those plastic flats, those 10, 20 flats, and you'll see it in the lab. Your yield can be anywhere from a half a pound to about 12 ounces. And now the costs to grow that tray equal about $4, right, which is not much. So if you break this down, your profit per tray is going to be anywhere from $8.5 to almost $15. And if we expand that to per pound, it's anywhere from $21 to $36 per pound. So you get a really, you have really good margins in growing microgreens. You have a, uh, a high profit per tray or per pound. And if you look at the breakdown of the expense, your largest expense is going to be your seeds. There's a lot of retailers that will sell seeds. You're going to want to grow or buy uh, seeds from reputable sellers to prevent any sort of issues such as mold contamination that may occur if you're buying less than great seeds. So if you are thinking about starting a microgreen business, you know, one of the first things that you want to do is investigate the market, right? We say that they could be selling anywhere from $25 to $40 a pound. Look at where you're at, check out farmers markets, grocery stores online, see what they're actually going for. And then determine what are the big sellers, right? What are people buying? Are they buying broccoli uh, microgreens? Are they buying sunflower? Uh, pea, etc. You know, see what the big sellers are, and you may want to um, focus on growing this, right? Some other uh, business tips. You want to get your, before you start expanding, you really want to get your production down, right? So you want to make sure that you are able to grow what you want to grow and do it successfully. So do several test trays. Try growing different species. Have a process down, right? Know how long it takes to go from sowing your seeds to germination to harvest. And then know the costs of all that, right? And that's going to help you. From there, uh, a good tip would be to make friends with restaurants, right? Your restaurants are generally going to be your best customers. Uh, and typically, if you can get hooked in with a good restaurant, they are going to be reliable. Right? And that reliable customer is going to allow you to streamline your production. Now, you want to get a minimum order of $50. Uh, anything less than that, it may not be worth the delivery time and cost. Right? So when you're trying to set some of them up, if you could hook up with a restaurant, maybe they're going to uh, order $50 a week worth of microgreens. That's really going to help you now in uh, kind of starting this business and starting to make somewhat of a profit. Um, if you already have some sort of relationship with a restaurant or chefs, chefs are the, the guys you want to go to, uh, more so than managers in a lot of cases, right? They really run the restaurant. Um, next step is you may want to bring over some microgreen samples, right? Tell them what you're doing, you're selling, see if they're interested. Uh, don't go when it's busy, right? Go early in the morning or in the afternoon before there's a, a rush. Right? And then you want to emphasize how local and fresh your microgreens are, right? I'm growing right here. Please buy from me. Besides restaurants 
investigate health food stores, right? We just talked about how healthy these microgreens are and these sprouts are. Health food stores are likely are going to want to carry them. Uh, and then also you can promote your business online. There may be avenues there. So that's kind of the background behind all this. Now let's get into how to actually grow them. Well, the first step for a lot of the species are you're going to want to pre-soak your seeds. Now, this isn't true of all of them. And the two links I have down here uh, give you a nice breakdown of different species and whether you want to pre-soak or not. So if you're going to pre-soak your seeds, you pre-soak your seeds. Again, it's typically like overnight for a couple of hours, right? Eight to 12 hours. Uh, the next step is that you're going to be growing these in flats. So you're going to take your standard flat, right? It's a 1020 flat, so 10 inches by 20 inches. And you're going to want one that has drainage holes on the bottom. And then you're going to fill it um, with your media. Typically, your soil is media that we talked about, right? You want to add enough media to be one and a half inches thick. You're then going to take a second flat that doesn't have holes. And you're going to pour two cups of water in that second flat. Now, we are going to be bottom watering our microgreens, and we're doing this uh, for a couple reasons. First is we don't want to disturb the seeds that we have sown on top by watering on top of them, right, because that could disturb your seeds. Second, they do say by bottom watering, it is going to help reduce um, potential mold, which is one issue that we have when growing these. So we are going to be bottom watering, so we fill our other... Um, flat with water, and then we place our flat with the holes on them in which we're going to be growing our microgreens into that flat. Right? So we put the, the flat with the holes into the holeless one, and now water is going to help, water is going to flow up through the soil, and that's how we're going to water our microgreens moving forward. The next step is to actually sow your seeds on your flat. So with microgreens, you're going to sow your seeds pretty thickly. And we're going to go to these uh, websites right now because I'm going to show you how that works. Let me pull up this other one, too. I don't know why it always does that. Let's see. We'll go to this one make sure we have this one, too. All right. Yep. Contact server. Okay. All right. So here's a, uh, a quick... Uh, seeding chart, and you'll see up here it has information on whether you need to pre soak it, etc. It talks about blackout time, which we'll talk about in a second, time to harvest, and then seeding rate that you see here. So, the seeding rate is the weight in ounces of your seeds that you're going to use to seed one flat, right? So, if you're growing broccoli microgreens. You would take an ounce of seeds, and you're going to spread that those seeds along your flat. And that's going to be uh, how many seeds that you are going to sow in one flat. If your sunflowers are bigger seeds, they're going to have, and if you can see, there's a, a heavier seeding rate. So you're going to take nine ounces of sunflower seeds, spread them across, and that is what that is going to be the how many you sow in your single flat. So this is one. Um, this has this also breaks down by how hard they are to grow. Uh, this has a more expanded list um, that you can see all these different species, and it gives you again uh, more information on pre-soaking them and seeding rate. Now the seeding rate may vary looking at what resource you do, so you're, you can play around with it um, and do a couple of trials and see what works best for you. Now going back to our slide here. Okay, so we've sown our seeds. The next step is we're going to gently press them into the soil, and we're going to miss them, and then we're going to place another flat on top of them and add some additional weight. So this is referred to that blackout time. And why we're doing this is, as you notice, we didn't bury our seeds in the soil. And we're doing this for a couple of reasons. One of which, we seed them so thickly, you'll see in the lab how thickly we sow these seeds, that when they start sprouting, it's going to kind of disturb the soil. Your greens are going to get a little dirty over the soil. It makes it harder when you are harvesting them to clean them off. So it's just easier to sow them on the surface and then put 
a flat on top of them to kind of mimic that they are under the soil a little bit. And if we add some weight to that flat, sometimes you'll see people stack multiple trays on top of each other. That weight is going to help press those seeds into the soil to make sure there's good contact and that they are able to uh, imbibe or soak up the water that they need to. And there's good contact for their roots to grow down. The added weight and resistance helps also make your seedlings a little bit stronger because there's some resistance with which they need to grow. And that's going to help uh, produce a better crop. So you uh, press your seeds in, you add a flat on top of it, add a little weight to it. And then you're going to place your microgreens on a shelf in a dark area for a few days. And you can refer to that blackout time that is listed on those separate resources that I have. Now, after germination and a couple of days of blackout, your microgreens are going to be bigger. You're then able to remove them, put them under sunlight or under grow light, and you'll see them green up, right? When they're in the darkness, they have yet to start producing uh, chlorophyll, so when you first take them out of there, they're going to be kind of um, yellowish or kind of almost translucent. They'll green right up when you put them under the sunlight, and then you'll be ready to harvest pretty soon, right? So you're going to harvest, depending on the time with the species, in about two weeks, just use scissors and them all, and then you can either eat them or maybe sell them for a profit. And water is needed. I I kind of skipped over that step. But again, if you need, as you're going along, you need to water these. Do it by pouring, again, always two cups of water into that bottom tray. So that's microgreens. Really easy. And you're going to see in the lab uh, me go through that entire process. The last thing I'm going to talk about is how to grow broccoli sprouts. So this is even easier. For broccoli sprouts, all you need is a 32 ounce wide mouth mason jar and a mesh lid that you can screw onto that. You can find them on Amazon. And then some sort of glass Tupperware or jar or container that will hold the jar at a downward angle like you see right there. So to grow your broccoli sprouts, you are gonna add uh, two tablespoons of broccoli sprouts into that mason jar. You're then gonna fill it halfway up with water and let it pre-soak over the night. The next day, you're going to wake up, you want to drain out your water, you're going to rinse them out, put some more water in, shake it around, rinse it. You're then going to take that jar, put it at an angle that you see there on your Tupperware, and then put that in the dark in the cabinet. Now, each day, um, you're going to let that sit. Um, you can do two rinses a day, or I think I might have done even one rinse. You'll see in the lab what I do. Um, I can't remember if it's morning and night or just morning. Either way, uh, play it safe. You can do two rinses a day, right? So in the morning, you're going to wake up, take your broccoli out, take your jar out, fill it with some water, stir it around, rinse it, rinse it out, put it back in there, put it back in the cabinet. You can do it again at nighttime. You do this, and in about four or five days, you will have... Uh, you will see your broccoli seeds will have sprouted, and you'll, this entire jar will fill up, or at least most of this jar will fill up, and they'll be ready to eat. Uh, oh, here you go. I got the whole thing listed right here. Uh, soak your seeds, again, two tablespoons, fill it with water, drain your jar, let's see, twice a day. I knew it was morning, right? So you want to rinse your jar twice a day. Um... Pretty easy. This is essentially everything I just talked about. Uh, so when you get to that fifth day and your sprouts are filling up your jar, they're ready to eat. You can pop them in the sunlight for a couple of hours. You'll see them green up and they're good to go. And now your sprouts will last about two to three days in the fridge. Uh, like I said, they have a pretty strong taste. Um, I mean, if you are into, like, health foods, like certain health foods, like wheatgrass or stuff like that, uh, it probably is similar. I don't know. I don't think I've, I think maybe I had a shot of wheatgrass at one time. They're, they taste spicy. They're not the best. But uh, you can incorporate them in a smoothie, and it's actually not so bad. And if you're thinking about how healthy they are and how good they are for you, you know, you kind of just force it down, and there you go. So 
not the best tasting, but they're really good for you. So I would recommend you guys try them out. Uh, they're pretty fun to grow and they're really easy. So the last thing I'm going to caution you guys about with your sprouts and then talking about your microgreens as well is that uh, when we're talking about sprouts, the moist environment in which they grow can be prone to E. coli or salmonella contamination. So it's important that you sterilize your equipment and you rinse your sprouts each day. That rinsing is going to help reduce uh, any potential contamination. And then you sterilize your equipment between growing, uh, you know, successive crops, we'll say. And then mold can also be an issue. Um, you'll see in the lab when I grew sunflower uh, microgreens last year, uh, they got mold on them. Right? And I'll talk in the lab about um, mold and some of the causes and how you can help prevent that. Uh, you will see the difference between these are the root hairs, right? So this is not mold. You will see this when your microgreens start growing. Those are all the root hairs. This spider web looking substance, this is mold, right? So you can spot the difference between it. If you see this, don't get concerned. But uh, mold can occur in on your microgreens. Bottom watering helps prevent this. Uh, some circulation can help prevent this. Uh, getting good quality seeds can help prevent this. Um, so things to consider, but something to be aware and an issue that you may run into when you are growing these things. So that's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. It's a little bit of a one-off, um, kind of just something interesting that I thought you guys might like uh, that we can look at before we get into the rest of this course, which is going to be on vegetative propagation. So that's it. Hope you guys are doing well. I will see you later.